Yep. All right. Another question. Um, is there a point in time that you are feeding mainly hay because there's no more grass growth? That's a good question. That's a good question. No, there's... So what, we're, what we try to do during the winter time is we've got all the hay placed around the farm, kind of spread out, you know, like 70 bales here, 100 bales here, 100 bales here, like at different farms. And so as the winter is going along, we basically, so like it was like November or something, we made our first pass around the farm, grazing as quick as we could, just tipping it, kind of like we do in the spring flush. It's a similar speed, yeah. And then that second rotation, we slowed them down real, you know, we've slowed them back a lot made them take it down to two inches, you know, the, the grass down. And then a lot of times we, you know, graze in the morning, feed hay in the, in the evening as the evening move or whatever. And so through the winter doing that, you know, day after day after day, we've been able to buy enough time now that we've still got stockpile ahead of us. You know, we've got, I don't know, hopefully we can make it last until the grass really starts growing. That's, that's our goal. I mean, we have a lot of hay, so we might have to slow them up and start feeding a little more hay. But as far as like going on full feed hay, you know, running out completely out of stockpile, that's kind of what you want to try to avoid and try to like manage, like to keep away from, especially in the in March mud month, which here in Missouri, that's March mud month is what like Greg refers to. Maybe it's different. It's probably way different in Saskatchewan yeah. and way different in, you know, down in like, Mississippi um but having that stockpile saved for like times like this where you can just go out and you can move the cattle you don't have to feed hay if it's like super muddy like it's raining right now yep it's just such you know such it just advantage. saves it just pays dividends in the long run so. and over the course of the winter if the cattle are getting a strip of stockpile minimum in mm -hmm. addition to whatever hay ration you're giving them even if it's not much like not enough for them to like really just a little bit of supplementation of stockpile with a big dose of hay, the cattle are just so much happier. Like mm -hmm. morale wise, you can tell like they love it when we get to unroll a wire, even if there's not a lot of feed in there, they just feel better knowing that like they got to move and try to like run around and pick out something to eat and then also eat hay. So like as far as the well being of the cattle, they seem to do a lot better if you're able to always give them a little bit of stockpile with everything. Like the goal is to never completely run out of stockpile because we were talking about it because it comes in handy in the spring mm -hmm. with that dead standing stockpile and that new spring grass to be able to graze both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so to buy time, yeah, like you were saying, we feed. And, but then again, like when we have this, you know, polar vortex, negative 25 degree temps, like, you know, nine inches of snow on the ground, we were, we were on full, full feed full hay feed for probably, for probably three, four three or four days. So it's condition dependent, you mm -hmm. know, like sometimes you got the stockpile, but you just can't access it because there's mm -hmm. ice or snow or, um, or whatever, you know, or maybe you need to move into the next area, but you just got a ton of rain and it's a bunch of bottom ground. And so it's super muddy and you don't want to go down in there and destroy it. Stomp all the so you, the so, you, so you buy some time by going full feed up on a hill to like, you know, let that dry out. And then once it's dry enough to go down there and take advantage of it, then you go back down and resume grazing stockpile. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's a, it's a balance and, and you learn how to manage that just through experience and um, knowing yeah. your herd, knowing how much they like to eat. Um, anyway, we can get into a whole discussion about how yeah. to calculate like... And then there's like the whole thing of, well, shouldn't you be, you, you shouldn't be feeding any hay. You should just great. You could just graze all through the winter. In and, theory, and you could, you could, but it's the time just like, like you said, yep. you get nine inches of snow. You can't like, at least Greg's cattle, they can't graze through that. And so they're not designed for it. having that hay. They're not designed or trained and having yeah. that hay, you know, it's just completely necessary. Yeah. Um, this is just an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And some years he feeds very little. And some years he feeds a lot. This year we fed a lot because we're growing the herd as well. So yeah. he wintered more animals this year than we ever have. Um, mm -hmm. So for like a maintenance herd, you know, if you're keeping it at a, at a threshold, Greg likes to consider, or, and this is just obviously situation dependent. dependent. Yeah. Greg factors about one bale per winter per head is like, that's what he wants to feed through the winter. Um, so, and that like, you know, throughout the winter, he's we're feeding three bales in the morning, three bales at night. Six for a bales full a day feed. for full feed. But throughout the winter, 
I'll say he has 370 head. He wants to feed close to 370 bales to over, his, the course of the winter. over the course of the and winter. And the way you calculate it out is, it, is it's 3% of the animal's body weight in feed every day is needed for just maintenance. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, 1,000 pound cow, 3% body weight is 30 pounds. 30 pounds. They need 30 pounds of hay a day. How much does your round bale weigh? 1,200 pound, 1200 pound round rack, bale. But you want 20% residual, so, so 80% of that. 80% of 1,200, which is... Like which over, is uh, so anyway, over 800 and then pounds 800 then, pounds so then you multiply that out and you need about for 370 head three percent you need about six bales it's six yeah, or seven you, bales you but you got to do the math but the, the thing to remember is you need three percent body weight every day just for maintenance and so mm -hmm. know the way to your bales know the way to your cows and you can do the math and figure that out mm -hmm. how long your winter is how much hay you're roughly going to be able to feed that's sort of how greg comes out to one bale per head for the duration of the winter, 370 mm -hmm. head, 370 bales mm -hmm. get fed. And obviously he, he would like, like to finish the winter with a hundred bales left over mm -hmm. is what is, is his ideal. Just cause that's like, it's just like almost having money in the bank. Yeah. It's like an insurance policy. If like, you start so. like whittling it down and you're down to five, six bales or whatever, like you're sort of sweating when you get down to that because mm -hmm. there's a situation where maybe there's a, the spring flush is late and, like you're going to be screwed. So mm -hmm. be scrambling to try to buy some hay off of somebody, which is never a good thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's just experience getting, getting used to it. And we're by all means, not experts at it at all. It's just what we've done so far this winter. And we've talked to Greg about this a lot because it's a really important, it is. It is. important thing to manage. And, and it re requires a lot of planning and forethought way back when in, in the summer, when you should be purchasing your hay to like figure out how much you need and, you know, like that whole deal. So, yeah. Yep.